Hi, Pink Dogs. Welcome to another story time with Pink Dog. Today we are going to be reading Stone Fox as usual. And, um, chapter three, Searchlight. It is easy to tell when it's winter in Wyoming. There is snow on everything. The trees, the houses, the roads, the fields, and even the people, if they stay outside long enough. It's not a dirty snow. It's a clean, soft snow that rolls like that rests like a blanket over the entire state. The air is clear and crisp, and the rivers are all frozen. It's fun to be outdoors and see the snowflakes float down past the brim of your hat and hear the squeak of the fresh powder under your boots. Winter in Wyoming can be the most beautiful time of the year, if you're ready for it. Little Willie was ready. He had chopped enough wood. They would not be cold. He had stocked enough food. They would not go hungry. He had asked Lester at the general store how much food Grandfather had brought last year. Had bought last year. Then he had purchased the same amount. This would be more than enough, because Grandfather wasn't eating very much these days. The coming of snow as early as October also meant the coming of school. But Little Willie didn't mind. He liked school. However, his teacher, Miss Williams, had told Grandfather once, Far as I'm concerned, th that boy of yours just asks too many questions. Grandfather just laughed and said, How's he going to learn if you don't ask? Then, later, Grandfather said to Little Willie, If your teacher don't know, you ask me. If I don't know, you ask the library. If the library don't know, then you've got yourself a good question. Grandfather taught Little Willie a lot, but now Little Willie was on his own. Each morning he would get up and make a fire, then he would make oatmeal mush for breakfast. He ate it, Searchlight ate it, Grandfather ate it. He would feed Grandfather a spoonful at a time. After breakfast, Little Willie would hitch up Searchlight to the sled. It was an old wooden sled that Grandfather had bought from the Indians. It was so light that Little Willie could pick it up with one hand, but it was strong and sturdy. Little Willie rode on the sled, standing up, and Searchlight would pull him five miles across the snow-covered countryside to the schoolhouse, which was located on the outskirts of town. Searchlight loved the snow. She would wait patiently outside the schoolhouse all day long, and Little Willie never missed a chance to run out between classes and play with his friend. After school, they would go into the town of Jackson and run errands. They would go, they would pick up supplies at Lester's general store, or go to the post office, or go to the bank. Little Willie had fifty dollars in a savings account at the bank. Each month, Grandfather had deposited the money Little Willie had earned working on the farm. You don't thank me, Grandfather would say. You earned it. You're a good little worker, and I'm proud of you. Grandfather wanted Little Willie to go to college and become educated. All Little Willie wanted to do was grow potatoes, but he respected his grandfather enough to do whatever he said. If there was no errands to run that day, Searchlight would just pull Little Willie up and down Main Street. Little Willie loved to look at all the people, especially the city slackers, as Grandfather called them. Why, they didn't know a potato from a peanut, Grandfather said, and their hands were as pink and soft as a baby's. You couldn't miss the city slickers. They were the ones who looked as if they were going to a wedding. At a little before six each day, Little Willie would position his sled in front of the old church on Main Street. Today again he waited, his eyes glued on the big church clock that loomed high overhead. Searchlight waited too, ears perked up, eyes about, eyes alert, legs slightly, legs, si legs slightly bent, ready to spring forward. Bong! At the first stroke of six, Searchlight lunged forward with such force that Little Willie was almost thrown from the sled. Straight down Main Street they went, the sled's runners barely touching the snow. They were one big blur as they turned right onto North Road, and they were almost out of town before the church clock became silent again. Go, Searchlight, go! Little Willie's voice sang out across the snowy twilight, and did Searchlight go. She had run this race a she had run this race a hundred times before, and she knew she was and she knew the whereabouts of every fallen tree and hidden gully. This enabled her to travel at tremendous speed, even though it was getting dark and more dangerous. Little Willie sucked in the cool night air and felt the sting of the wind against his face. It was a race all no it was a race all right, a race against time, a race against themselves, a race they always won. The small building up ahead was Grandfather's farmhouse. When Searchlight saw it, she seemed to gather up every ounce of her remaining strength. She forged ahead with such speed that this, the lad seemed to lift up off the ground and fly. They were so exhausted when they arrived at the house that neither of them noticed the horses tied up outside. Little Willie unhitched Searchlight, and then both of them tumbled onto the, over onto their backs in the snow and stared up at the moon. Searchlight had his head and one paw on Little Willie's chest and was looking the underside of his chin. Little Willie held, had a hold of Searchlight's ear, and he was grinning. The owner of the house stood in the front porch and watched them, tapping his foot impatiently. So that's all for Stone Fox Chapter 3, Searchlight. Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all later, pink dogs. And definitely be sure to join me in Stone Fox, because once this is finished, I will be reading another book as always, and that book, I will tell you what it will be. Um, it will be Serafina in the Black Cloak. I haven't read it either, so it will be a very 
big um, surprise to both of us. So that's why I am trying to get this book done. So there's probably going to be two episodes out today. So see you all. Um, um, I still haven't figured out of an outro for this. For my Animal Jam with Pink Dog, it's uh, something different. But I guess see you all in the next story time with Pink Dog. Bye.